determined to ban assault weapons in this country. I did it once before and we will do it again. With 10 weeks until the midterm elections, U.S. President Joe Biden visits key battleground states and pledges to tackle gun violence. We'll discuss the significance of the election and what it could mean for the president's agenda. Hello, I'm Arnold Nido and this is The Heat. What happens on November 8th will likely determine what President Biden and the Democratic Party can accomplish over the next two years. Democrats are trying to keep Republicans from winning control of the U.S. House of Representatives and gaining a majority in the U.S. Senate. High inflation, abortion rights and crime are all expected to influence how voters decide. There's also the ongoing investigation into documents seized at former President Donald Trump's home in Mar-a-Lago, Florida. A filing released by the U.S. Justice Department on Tuesday suggests Trump advisers may have moved or hidden classified government documents at the property. On Thursday, a federal judge in Florida is expected to hear arguments about Trump's request to assign a special master to review the evidence seized by the FBI agents, something Republicans like the governor of South Dakota says needs to happen. I don't know if the DOJ and FBI can be trusted to tell us what was in there. That's that's the thing. You can see folders. You can see big words on on the. Do we know that that right. is really what President Trump brought to his right. home? Uh, do we know that he put them there? Do we know what's inside? That's yeah. why I think it's important that that the DOJ bring in someone who's outside of this, that's a neutral individual that can look at this and really build some trust back in our justice system. For more now on the Trump investigation and upcoming midterm elections, let's bring in our panel. Joining us from New Jersey is Brittany Lee Lewis. She's an African-American 20th century history professor at George Washington University. Also with us from Virginia is Craig Shirley. He's a U.S. presidential historian and Ronald Reagan biographer. From Toronto, Amisha Cross is a democratic strategist and political analyst. And Eric Bowling is the host of Eric Bowling, The Balance on Newsmax. He joins us from Palm Beach County, Florida. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Eric Bowling, let's start with someone who's not running in the midterm elections, and that, of course, is Donald Trump. The FBI, as we've been reporting, raided his home, took away documents that they say are secret, uh, and now prosecutors are considering whether to bring charges. Um, what do you make of this case? And what kind of impact will it have on the midterm elections? Well, great question, Arne. You, you would think Trump was running because the media coverage and the, the scrutiny that's, that's being foisted upon him by President Biden and others. Um, I believe that this will, that what this, the FBI raid of the compound has done up until now, up until what we've, until we find out what actually he had in his possession. What it's done is coalesce the, the MAGA crowd behind him. It's also taken, I believe, a lot of the independents who may or may not have liked Donald Trump behind him as well, because they feel that there, there's some scrutiny upon him. The way I understand this, Arne, and I have Christina Bob on my show a couple of times, who's one of the people signing the affidavit, I'm sorry, signing the warrant when they raided the compound. The FBI was given boxes in January. They were given boxes in June. And then there was not much negotiation be between June and the raid uh, early August. So I believe what this is doing is it's Trump is becoming some sort of uh, martyr uh, on the right, and it's actually helping his poll numbers go up in, in a very odd way. I just have to point out whatever Trump did, and, and don't let's not talk what aboutism. Hillary Clinton did worse. They have the documents that Trump took. Hillary Clinton used a a, a bleach bit, which is a way to, to destroy all electronic um, records of, or fingerprints of documents, and she had. 2,000 classified documents, 2,000 of them. So there's that. Craig Shirley, uh, the Republican senator, Lindsey Graham, he's been talking about this. This is how he reacted to the Trump raid and the possibility of charges being brought against the former president. Let's listen. Most Republicans, including me, believes when it comes to Trump, uh, there is no law. It's all about getting him. 
there's a double standard when it comes to Trump. What happened with Hunter Biden is that the FBI weighed in to make sure a story didn't break for the 2020 election. We now have whistleblowers at the FBI telling Senator Grassley that they were told to slow down and back off Hunter Biden. And I'll say this. If there's a prosecution of Donald Trump for mishandling classified information after the Clinton debacle, which you presided over and did a hell of a good job, there'll be riots in the streets. It's a great, that's quite a warning there from uh, Lindsey Graham. But does he have a point when he says that there are double standards? Yes, I mean, I certainly believe so. Uh, just look down through uh, the last, la I'd say the last 10 or 15 years, is that prosecution of, of Republicans is, is speedy and fast, and prosecution of Democrats never materializes. Whether it's Hillary Clinton uh, or any anybody else on the left, they seem to go away scot-free. Uh, look at Lois Lerner. I mean, she, she manipulated government documents to, to punish conservative groups at the IRS, and yet she's walking around today scot-free, never having paid her debt to society. And she's just one example. Uh, I think that a lot of people feel uh, the, the, the Trump raid kind of crystallized it for them, for a lot of people. Uh, not, I don't know if it's a, it's a huge majority, but it's certainly, I believe, a majority of Americans who believe that their government is oppressive, out of control, and needs to be uh, needs to be checked, and the best way to check it is with uh, the the elections this fall. And Craig, what do you make of that warning that uh, Lindsey Graham issued there at the end of that excerpt that we played? I mean, is that a responsible thing to do? I, I'm not a Lindsey Graham spokesman, so yeah. you'll have to ask. Oh, well, I want your view on it. You'll have to ask him. I do know he's a very a very intelligent man. Uh, he made some very very good points, and I think we ought to focus on. Uh, the, 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 what he talked about in, 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 his, uh, in his entire interview and not just a throwaway line at the end of the, the uh, interview. Okay, Amisha, I understand you are in D.C. and great to have you with us. Now, we've just heard two of our Republican guests cite several instances which point to double standards on the part of the U.S. justice system when it comes to uh, prosecuting uh, politicians. Um, do they have a point? There is um, some disservice paid to the justice system when it comes to um, prosecuting politicians, but not for the reasons your two guests mentioned. Largely because, historically speaking, uh, the presidency has been quite protected. And the belief of the justice system has been that if you prosecuted them, if you held them to the full extent of the law, that it would somehow dismantle people's belief in democracy, that it would shake up this country to its core, that it would tear apart the very thread and the fabric of who we are. So we have seen presidents commit crimes. Uh, we watched it with Nixon. Obviously, we're seeing this with, with Donald Trump. And we... And the Justice Department has largely tried to shy away from making this political. Anytime you have a former president who's done something, it's automatically political by virtue of that person holding the nation's highest office. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there is something to be said about DOJ basically handling somewhat with kid gloves what we're seeing and in juxtaposition to what we're seeing in terms of the, the Trump prosecution in Georgia or what we're seeing happen in the state of New York. Um, those are cases that are obviously not having anything to do with uh, some of some of the crimes that we're looking at with DOJ, but the way that those are handled are very different because they reside outside of the federal system. Right, Amisha, one of the arguments being made by Trump supporters is that what is happening here is that um, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party are trying to neutralize uh, a politician who could possibly be one of Joe Biden's chief opponents in the 2024 election. I think that's completely ridiculous. What we're seeing even from the right now, from networks like Fox News, from uh, Murdoch and all of the things that he owns, from several conservative groups, is kind of a, a, a coronation of sorts around the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, in trying to bolster his attention and his affections and get him as many media hits as possible going into the 2024 election cycle. I believe that Republicans largely want to have someone who walks the walk and talks the talk of Donald Trump, but doesn't come along with the baggage of a January 6th, that doesn't come along with the baggage of a FBI raid at Mar-a-Lago, that doesn't come along with the baggage of not being able to hold it together in, in, in media settings or attacking the media or saying the things that he said that got him kicked off Twitter. There are several things that Republicans actually like about Donald Trump, but don't want to see in Donald Trump running because of the baggage associated with him. Brittany Lee Lewis, what do you make of this case? Uh, and what do you make of what Eric Bowling told us at the beginning of the show, that uh, what is happening here is that 
voters in the United States are actually coalescing around Donald Trump after his uh, home was raided, after the, the, this uh, legal action was uh, taken against him. Yeah, you know, I, I, I do agree with Eric. I mean, I think one thing that none of us can deny is Trump's hold on U.S. politics, the media, and the Republican Party. You know, regardless of what happens to Donald Trump, I, it does seem that Trumpism is here to stay. Trump's favor and kind of emulating his brand of this hard right populism, um, including his doubts, like in, when politicians are also including kind of their doubts about the integrity of the election, that's become a widespread tactic among, among candidates who are looking to secure primary wins. I mean, we've seen this happen. We've seen this happen with Liz Cheney, right? Um, basically, any time that Trump has come out against someone and has said, you know, I don't want this person to win, um, we've seen those losses happen. So I do think there's something there in terms of his backing and his followers saying that we don't trust this government. Um, look what they're doing to Donald Trump. Therefore, if, if they're going to tear down Donald Trump, we're going to support everybody else um, who aligns with Trumpism and that ideology. Brittany, uh, President Biden has been campaigning this week in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Uh, he's criticized Republicans who are standing by Donald Trump. Let's listen to what uh, some of the president had to say. MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and economic security. They're a threat to our very democracy. They refuse to accept the will of the people. They embrace, embrace political violence. They don't believe in democracy. This is why, in this moment, those of you who love this country, Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans, we must be stronger, more determined, and more committed to saving America than the MAGA Republicans are destroying America. So, Brittany, uh, President Biden also said that the Republican Party has taken a turn towards, quote, unquote, semi-fascism. I mean, is that a good strategy on the part of the president and the Democratic Party to label these tens of millions of supporters of Donald Trump fascists? I mean, I think it's true. And I think that that's not far-fetched and it's not hyperbolic. I think it's very clear. I mean, you have some of the very same people who are behind Donald Trump essentially saying, oh, we have to get rid of the FBI now, right? Mm. Um, it's really pulling out the very essence and of the very fabric of what it means to have a U.S. democracy when you begin to call into question all of the things that we've held to be true, that we have fair um, elections, right? That the very entities like the FBI or the police department or whatever it may be, that these are no longer institutions um, that are safe and are actually executing the will of the people. And I think for Biden, who is somebody who really has based his um, agenda as well as his kind of like a political uh, ideology and his way of bringing the two sides together, right, that has been mm -hmm. his legacy or that, that is what he wants his legacy to be is I can go on both sides. Well, you can't deal with the Trumpsters, right? Um, they're not really interested in, in, in making, uh, you know, making compromises, if you will. They're truly the radical right, right, and their politics align with many of the fascist policies that we see abroad. So I don't think it's far-fetched at all. Yeah, but isn't the art of politics, Brittany, trying to persuade people that your view is the right one? Sure. I mean, I would say that is the art of politics, absolutely. Um, but I don't think that takes away from what Biden is saying, just in terms of there, it is very clear. The policies and the ideology that stands behind Trump and Trumpism is in fact fascist in nature. Mm -hmm. We see that by destruction of like women's rights. We see that by destruction of the environment. We see that by, you know, all of the things that are indicative mm -hmm. um, of fascism. Okay, Eric Bowling, you're a Trump supporter. Are you a fascist? No, no, I, I, whether I'm a Trump supporter or not, I'm, I'm, I'm a constitutionalist. I'm American constitutionalist is in my pocket. The, the fact that Biden, the, the hypocrisy that Biden is saying that, that MAGA groups are fascist is, is projecting. You want to talk fascism? It's when you weaponize the FBI. When you find out that the FBI was throttling back or telling Facebook to throttle back the Hunter Biden laptop story, for whatever reasons, when has the FBI ever gotten involved in a media company telling them what and what not to print? Want to talk about fascism? When, it's fascism when you weaponize the IRS. You talked to, Craig Shirley talked about Lois Lerner, uh, you know, 10 years ago, the IRS, 87,000 new IRS agents who are now able to be, some of them are, are armed. That is fascism. Fascism isn't conservative views on abortion or right to life. That's just a right versus left belief. That's not fascism. Fascism is when 
the 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 border the man in charge of the border mm -hmm. Mayorkas looks the other way and two million two million illegals come into this country unchecked for for COVID yet a a, a world class tennis star yeah. can't come in and play tennis but two million can be dropped off in the major cities in the United States and never ask their vaccine status that is all right. Passionate. Eric, uh, all of this could or could not have much of an impact on the midterm elections. The Republican governor of Maryland, Larry Hogan, says he doesn't believe that Republicans will make a clean sweep in November. Uh, by clean sweep, he means win the House of Representatives and get a majority in the United States Senate. Um, I mean, Hogan, for the record, backed a candidate in the primaries who was defeated by a candidate that was supported by former President Donald Trump. Uh, but this is what Hogan had to say. Let's listen. It was really sad, and it's what I've been talking about for two years, that, you know, this should be a really huge year for Republicans just because of the failures of the, of the Democrats and who are in control of everything and Biden's low approval ratings. But we could blow it by nominating unelectable people, and that's exactly what's happening across the country and why the wave is, is going to be more of a, of a ripple rather than a tidal wave. You so what do you make of those comments, uh, Eric Burling, that uh, the Republicans are nominating unelectable people? Donald Trump has a 98 percent win rate on the people he endorses. Larry Hogan, Governor Hogan, has always been an anti-Trumper. He's wrong. He's wrong. This is going to be a red wave. Like it or not, you see this every election where one side is, is really out ahead and the other side says, well, things are moving our way, and, you, and the rhetoric starts to change. No way. This is a slam dunk for the House of Representatives, Republican. I believe it'll be a two-seat majority in the Senate as well. And, and, and this whole nonsense of if, if Biden's becoming more popular because he's giving away free money, that's insanity. People are too smart. They've seen too much crime in their streets, and they see too much BS going on with our FBI's and our, and our IRS's to, to, to not vote Republican in two months. Amisha Cross, has Larry Hogan injected a dose of reality into this uh, election, or has he got it wrong? I think he's absolutely uh, a realist, and we have to recognize, so Trump America and Maryland are two very different places. Uh, Larry Hogan is a moderate Republican. Uh, the, the level of Trumpism that we've seen in certain states across the South would not fly in the state of Maryland. Uh, it's a lot more diverse state, a lot more economically stable, a lot more college educated. Um, it's, a, it's a different type of landscape. But with that being said, we do know that to the point that Brittany made or earlier, there are some, Donald Trump took advantage of a dissent in America that already existed. He didn't create it. Um, it was already there. Part of that was an authoritarian slide that this country has been going down for since the early 2000s. We've seen that happen. And it's only been bolstered uh, over the course of the last few years. With that being said, it didn't take a lot for Americans to not believe in American institutions, because quite frankly, through multiple administrations, they have failed the American people, particularly those who are low income and those who are people of color. What we've seen with the MAGA doctrine and with former President Trump is somebody who has weaponized the sentiments of the American public, has turned the quasi-racist into people who carry that racism every single day and say things that they used to say in small groups out loud on large stages, and people who are willingly and ready to victimize everyday American citizens. This is not a sentiment that I think works for the majority of the country, because those people who voted in in the last presidential election will come out in the midterms because they've seen this hyper vigilant Republican Party strip women's reproductive rights. They've seen them chase after things like anti CRT law. CRT isn't even taught in K through 12. Yeah. It's not even taught at the college level. It's a subset of law school. We've seen them go after these culture wars and they believe that that is what's going to help them in the upcoming election. Mm -hmm. I think that that was a huge mistake. Uh, Craig Shirley, well, I want to get to the issue of reproductive rights in a moment, but Craig Shirley, looking at the political landscape right now, how do you see the midterms unfold? I think, I think Eric is absolutely right, is that, you know, historically speaking, uh, the first off-year election of a presidential term goes in, usually in large numbers to the opposition party. Uh, you look at uh, 1994, uh, when Republicans took uh, 74, 75 uh, House seats, and then in, uh, in, in 2010, when Republicans took even more. Democrats also can make the same claim, but it just so happens is that there is a natural aversion in this country currently, and has been for the last, oh, I'd say 40 years, to giving one party too much power. Uh, and I, I would expect that the, the Republicans will sweep the, the House 
I, I think somewhere, I won't, I won't put a number on it. I don't want to get pinned down, but I think it's going to be substantial. And Eric is right. They're also going to take control of the Senate. So I think, I think the, 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 uh, it's, it's going to, the agenda is going to change very quickly for Joe Biden. His spending spree is going to stop dead in his tracks because the House controls the purse strings. And they won't. They are not going to fund any more of these uh, programs of uh, uh, inflationary programs of uh, Joe Biden. So it's going to be it's going to be a stalemate uh, for the next two years anyway. Brittany, I want to get back to that point that Amisha raised a moment ago, and that is reproductive rights, more commonly known as Roe versus Wade here in the United States. How big an issue do you think that is going to be in the midterm elections? <laughs> I think it's going to be a huge issue. I mean, quite frankly, you're talking about a, a precedent that has been in place for decades that was overturned, and it has very, very real psychological, um, physical, and lived experiences um, for women in this country, right? So I think that it's one of those key issues um, that voters are looking at, and they're going to, going to continue to think about, right? And as we think about the way in which, you know, the editors of the New England Journal of Medicine, mm -hmm. you know, literally one of the most prestigious periods reviewed medical journals in the world is talking about the repercussions of these decisions and the trigger laws in the various states. When we think about the UN panel, they also recently came out with a report condemning um, the U.S. Supreme Court's decision and what we're seeing in various states throughout this country, citing the devastating financial and health concerns it poses, right? I think so often what we miss in this conversation is obviously we know that the health risks that are being posed to women who are being forced to give birth. But I think the other part of this that we're really missing is the connection between the economy. And as our people are struggling financially, right? We know groceries are up 10%. We know um, gas right, through the roof, absolutely. But we also need to think about the ways in which women and families and their economic security is going to keep coming into question as long as we have these total abortion bans. Many of these states already have some of the worst economic and health outcomes for women and families across the country, and I'm just gonna give you a few examples. Mm -hmm. None guarantee out of the, out of the, I think it's 17 states, none of them guarantee, in reference to these statistics, none of them guarantee paid family and medical leave. 18 have gender wage gaps above the national average. Oh, 22 have poverty rates for women above the national average. 17 have poverty rates for children above the national average. You know, 19 have not extended Medicaid coverage for 12 months postpartum. I mean, we're talking about real economic disparities that are going to continue to take place. And we think about Roe versus Wade and the access to reproductive health care that it gave including abortion, it enabled many women to finish school and to really increase their earning potential, right? So we know the largest gains occurred in a decade and a half following Roe, during which women's labor force participation grew at the fastest rate on record, right. which includes you know, 15 years prior to the Supreme Court's decision. So I'm saying that to say that this is a very, very, very important issue that not only has uh, health realities, but also economic realities. I okay. know this is at the forefront. Right, a big issue, but how does it impact the midterms? Would this work to the advantage of the Democrats? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's one of those key things that we're all thinking about in terms of voting, right? And it's not just a women's issue, right? It's a family issue. It's an employer's issue. So this is something that's absolutely going to be at the forefront for the midterms. Eric Bowling, was this a blunder by the Republicans to support the reversal of Roe versus Wade? Uh, first of all, um, a blunder by the Republicans. They've never supported abortion rights. They've never done that. So I don't, I don't know if there's any blunder happening. Look, I'm a constitutionalist, and nowhere in this document does it say you have a right to an abortion. So that said, I'm also a libertarian. Now, Misha, I've, I've done TV with Misha for years. She knows I'm pro, I think a woman should have the right to choose what she wants to do with her body. I just, I completely think that the way it works and the way the Republic was set up by the founding fathers shouldn't be changed, or this should be a state by state issue. And if Brittany is right, and it means so much to so many people, it won't matter in New York or Florida, because Florida will go red, New York will go blue, and California will go blue. But it may matter in a, in a swing state like Arizona or Colorado, and maybe she's right I, on a national level. It won't matter in in 22, at the midterms, it will matter in a presidential election. I, I think they got it right. I'm, look, elections have consequences. A long time ago, I said, you need to, as you, if you're conservative, you need to elect, elect Donald Trump president over Hillary Clinton, because for if, if no other reason, be a single issue voter because he will be the person who puts maybe two Supreme Court justices right. in the high court. It ended up being three, and therefore everything worked. If the system worked the way yeah. it was supposed to, and if people want to 
vote people out because of that, then be my guest or leave the states because of that. Okay. Uh, again, I think they got it right. Yeah, let me get Amisha's view on that. Go ahead, Amisha. Yeah, so um, I, I do agree in part with what Eric said. I, I respect him a lot. I, I feel as though the reason why women's reproductive rights matter at the state level is because essentially um, the Republican Party has been chipping away at this for decades now. Quite frankly, during the Obama administration, we saw more state laws that were produced to prohibit abortion rights and prohibit access and also prohibit birth control rights. This isn't just about abortion rights. This is also access to birth control in many states and trigger laws. And the trigger laws that are there, in effect, would also cause ripple effects for women who are seeking alternative forms of, of becoming pregnant, like in vitro, women who have issues with fibroids or other you know, reproductive issues that have absolutely nothing to do with abortion because they need drugs like misoprostol, which, according to the Republican Party, is a drug that is only used for abortion. Right. If you know anything about the female anatomy, misoprostol is used to open the, the, the uterine cavity, which yeah. is used in many cases for women who have other um, reproductive issues that they need to have taken care of, and it helps with those procedures. Okay. Without that treatment, those women will die. So we think that we have to be very serious when we talk about this, but also understand that the states themselves have a lot of control here. And yeah. quite frankly, several red states, to Eric's point earlier, um, several red states are going to be affected in ways that blue states right. won't. My home state is Illinois. Okay. Wanna... Illinois is going to produce reproductive freedoms no matter what. But Florida, Alabama, Louisiana, the state I grew up in, Mississippi, okay, Amisha, those gonna... are states I'm going to Okay, Amisha, I'm going to get to Craig very quickly. Craig, I've got less than a minute. I want to talk about an issue that we have not talked about in detail. You mentioned it briefly, and that is the spending by the Biden administration, uh, which leads us to talk about the economy, the inflation rates that we are seeing right now, the high prices that we are seeing around the country. That's going to have a big impact, isn't it? Okay. Sure. This is going to be this is going to be a pocketbook election. It's not going to turn on abortion. Abortion polls very in the in the second tier of issues uh, among chief among concern among right. American right. voters. They 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 are concerned about inflation. They're concerned about groceries. They're concerned about gasoline. They're concerned about the future. Yeah. They're concerned about the economy. They right. the abortion right. does not poll very high at all. So that that and that bodes ill for. The Biden administration, because right now, Democrats and liberals and Joe Biden are the, on the wrong side okay. of all those issues. Okay. All right. And that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. of business is to bring value. Business activities in Europe.